Hello everyone, welcome back to another Space Entry Scripting tutorial. Okay, so this one here is an airlock detection that can be used in a ship or a base. So let me quickly show you how this works. So in here we have a very small room, but we'll just use it just for this here tutorial. So you can see it's pressurized up, and now what we're going to do is we're going to create a leak. And as you can see there, we've got a light comes on, sound plays, and our door closes. I'll wait that for that go all the way down and we'll add that block in so let's add that back in there we go so there's the light comes off the sound block stops and the door opens and if we remove that it's very quick but not as quick as it, you'd, some people would like it but I'll go in depth into how that works here now in a second so for this here what you'll need is two timer blocks not absolutely necessary but I recommend it your program block is absolutely mandatory as you would know and your air vent is mandatory for this here to work. So let's go through the naming conventions. So your first timer block is going to be called timer underscore ALD underscore start. So ALD stands for air leak detection. We're just going to shorten that down a bit so it's not as long. So that's your start and then this one here is your stop. Oh, there it is. So timer underscore ALD underscore stop. Then you have your program block, that can be called whatever you want, that there's just been left as program block 13. And if we come around the back, we have your air vent, and we've called that air vent underscore ALD, which is air vent underscore air leak detection. So let's get into how this here works. So we go into the code, and this is pretty much it here. Very, very short compared to the combination lock that is over there behind us. If you want to see that, that is in the previous video, which will be linked above. So let's go through this and how this here works. So what you want to do is you want to tell the program to run in a loop. And you're going to have the update as 100, so that's going to run... Um, I can't remember exactly what way it is, like 100 times a second or... Uh, it's like every uh, 100 game ticks, you want this here to run. You can have it run every 10, but it's too... It's too much, so I set it to 100. Then you have another one which is your integer and it's going to be called change equals zero. I'm going to explain what that does now in a second but it'll all make sense. Now this is your main loop. So that's everything that it's going to do is going to go down this bit here. So we come to the interfaces so this is where you will do your variables and look for the various blocks in the game. So first things first you want to get your air vent. So as you know the air vent behind uh, over there in this part is called air vent underscore ALD. We're assigning that to the variable air vent underscore ALD. Then you want to look for your timer block, which is your start one and your stop one, and they are both called timer ALD start and timer ALD stop, and you're just assigning them to these here variable names here. And remember, these are your interfaces, and if you want to know where these here are, they are going to be in the description below, or you can go and visit the, the tutorial for zero, which is where to find the interfaces. And then we come to the main logic, which is this bit down here. So you can notice that there's a couple of if statements here and there's an else statement, but I'll explain this here now in a second. So first things first, you want to do an if statement and you want to check to see if the air, um, if the uh, air vent can pressurize. So what you're doing is you're asking the program, can the air vent pressurize? If it can't pressurize, you want to road, uh, read. Sorry, you want to run this bit here, and this bit here is if the change equals equals zero run this bit here so whenever this runs from the start because this here is zero and this here is looking for zero that's going to be true so it's going to do it's going to run this bit here and what it's going to do is it's going to tell the timer block uh, to trigger now which is the start so you want to tell it to trigger now and then you want to tell it to change equals one so anybody that doesn't know what's happening here pretty much what it's doing is it's preventing the program from constantly looping over and over and over again, telling the timer block to keep triggering now, now, now. So think of it as like, if you told somebody that you wanted them to say, I want you to, to let me know if there's fire in the building. So they stand there and they're watching for fire and next thing all of a sudden there's fire. You don't want them to keep shouting, fire, there's fire, there's fire, there's fire. You get it when you only hear it the one time, that's all you need. You only want it to hear it the one time. So what you're doing is you're telling the program if the change equals equals zero, 
run it, but as soon as change equals equals one, as soon as change equals one, this is no longer true, so it doesn't keep running this. So this pretty much runs in a loop, but it doesn't run this here bit. So what'll happen is, whenever it goes through this bit here, it only runs this action once. And as soon as change equals one, this is no longer true, and it just keeps going over and over and over again. So it prevents this bit here from running all the time. And I will demonstrate that there in a second, as to what I mean. But that's pretty much what it does. Then, once the air leak is no longer um, false, you want to tell it to trigger the um, timer block for stopping, and that's your trigger now function, and reset your change to zero. And that is pretty much it. So I'm going to demonstrate now how that works and what I mean by that if you're a wee bit confused, which I don't blame you. It is very, very confusing, stu uh, confusing stuff, I should say. Right, so let's remove that. Let's remove that whole logic. So for the purpose of this here, I'm just going to copy this here so I don't make a mess, but I'm going to delete this here because we're going to pretend this doesn't exist. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove this logic here, which is this if statement here. So remove that and that. So now what happens is this no longer um, keeps running. And now we're going to demonstrate how this here works. Do check code. That's OK. And let's run it. All seems fine for now, but let's see what happens whenever we remove this block. Now, do you hear that? That's that's the time block. It keeps it keeps saying it's true, so it keeps going and going and going and going and going. So it's telling that time block to trigger now, and it keeps telling that block to reloop. So now, as you know, it's a complete mess. But it does still work. It still does the job. But you don't want it. It doesn't sound right. It sounds incomplete. It doesn't doesn't sound right at all. So what we'll do is we'll go in here and we'll add that. And we'll put that. Back. There we are. Let's do a check code. And let's do that again. So remove that block. And listen carefully. And there you can see it. It's not it's not getting the time block to keep doing it. It only runs the one time and that's it. That's the only time it needs. Let's add that block back in. And there it is. So that is it for this story. I hope I've explained that as best as I could. I know it is a wee bit confusing, but for some people it does sort of make sense. Um, it is, you can sort of see why it's there and the purpose of it, but putting this on a ship would be very, very beneficial. If you have want to have no certain section in your ship that will close off as, if it senses an air leak, it's very, very doable. You're only changing, change like the name of convention for your different things, like for example, that could be air vent 1, and then another part of the ship is air vent 2, and then just keep everything consistent, so you'll have a timer block for one, a timer block for another one, so start one, stop one, and then in the next section of the ship, it could be like start two, uh, stop two, and air vent two, so they're all in one group. And you put that along your ship, and you can do all that. Now, what you could do is you could actually tell this light and this uh, sound block to be triggered by the code. But as you know from the combination lock, it's easier to do it through a timer block because then you can change, swap, and change whatever you want. So you just, if you tell the timer block to trigger, you can add whatever you in here. So if you don't want it to play a sound, just remove it like that there. And let's do it on this one here. Staff actions, remove the sound block. And what will happen is whenever we run this here again, it's silent. So there's my reason for it. It's better doing that through a timer block than it is doing it through a program block. And that is pretty much it. Now, the other thing I will say is if you're going to be adding a sound block to it, make sure that you set the duration to the highest it'll go, which I think is like 30 minutes. That's because um, whenever you're triggering it, it's just going to keep running it in a constant loop, uh, which is the sound block loop, not the actual like program loop. It's the sound, how, how many times it will play it. Just make sure you set that. But the only thing is, once uh, if the air leak is in the game for more than 30 minutes, the sound will stop, but your light should stay on. Uh, there is ways that you can go around it. You could add a bit of code that will re-trigger that sound block, but it's um, something that we'll probably look at in the future in a bit more advanced tutorial. But that is pretty much it for this here tutorial. If you want this here code, do visit my website. There you'll be able to see it as well as any other code that has been used in the tutorial series, as well as this combination lock. As I say, if you want to look at this here tutorial, that is in the previous video to this one here. If you have any comments or any suggestions before new scripts or something that you'd like to see, do drop down below or visit Discord channels linked in the description. The Discord channel has a dedicated channel for uh, script suggestions so if you have something in particular 
do drop it in there and I'll try and see if I can get something made and make a video for it. But that's it for this here tutorial. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one. I would like to give a massive shout out to the channel donators. You help make these videos possible.